In the second set of notes on section 5.6, what I'd like you to do is try numbers 3 and 4 on your own. Those are two proof examples that will help you practice the various methods to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. When you're finished, you can compare your answers with mine. At this time, I'd like you to hit pause. In example three, you should have come up with the fact that we have right angles as a result of the perpendicular segments. You should recognize that you can prove those two triangles congruent by side angle side. They are right triangles, but we're not using the HL postulate considering the hypotenuses of those right triangles are not congruent. So since we're using side angle side to prove the right triangles congruent, we have to mention that those right angles are congruent. So in step six, I mentioned that the two right angles are congruent because if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. We could then prove the triangles congruent by side angle side. When figuring out where to use CPCTC, we have to think about what we want to prove, and we want to prove that that large quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So we can use CPCTC on segments QD and AU to say that those two segments are congruent within the triangles, which would give us one pair of opposite sides congruent in the large quadrilateral. But since in the given information they told us that sides QD and AU are parallel, what we have now is we have one pair of opposite sides of the quadrilateral that are both parallel and congruent to each other. So that's enough to say that that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And that is the third method that we reviewed on the first page, which, which states that if one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are both parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Moving on to example four, for this one, you should have recognized the parallel segments give you some alternate interior angles congruent. So the ones that I'm highlighting in red here, you should mention that those red angles are congruent to each other. And the reason being is, if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, since we were given that those large angles, ABC and ADC, are congruent, and we now know that those red smaller angles are congruent, we can use the subtraction property to say that those purple angles, angle CBD and angle BDA, are congruent by the subtraction property. From there, we now have another pair of alternate interior angles congruent, and now we're working in reverse. So we have alternate interior angles congruent, which then means that those two segments, BC and AD, are parallel because if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. We can then say that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram because of the first reason we talked about, which states that if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Now notice for this one, I did not prove two triangles congruent because I found another way. You could have also proved the two triangles congruent and worked with CPCTC and approached this proof in a different manner. If you'd like to see if your way works, please check with either one of us and we'd be happy to help you out.